Autodesk Inventor allows the designer to create a layout sketch that will help validate sizing and motion. This quick and easy practice can help ensure your design intent is met without having to create parts and assemblies that don't. The vid this video will demonstrate how to make sketch blocks, place this layout sketch into an assembly, and produce working parts from the sketch. In Inventor, I have this fairly simple assembly here that has a crank, an arm, and a little piston that slides back and forth, and a little groove here. And I was able to complete this and test this in the sketch environment before I ever completely modeled a part. And you can see that if I turn this crank here that the, uh, the piston moves back and forth on, in, this, in the track, and it's all ready to go. <clears throat> and I, could, I was able to, again, test this and prove that it was going to do what I wanted it to do before I ever created a single part. So here's the process. I started off with a sketch inside of Autodesk Inventor. Now in normal bottom-up modeling, you would create a separate sketch for every single part. So there would be a sketch for the base, there would be a sketch for the slider, there would be a sketch for the crank arm, and then there would be a sketch for the crank itself. And all of those would be four different parts. I would model them, I would put them together in the assembly environment. If it didn't work, I would go back through to each part and change the dimensions and make sure that it worked. But I can do that all in one sketch here and save a little bit of time, then import that sketch into the assembly environment and finish out my modeling there. And that's what I'm going to do. So the first step here is to get your parts modeled about what you think that they need to be. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to be close. Because again, this is Inventor, it's fully parametric, you can go back and you can change these at any time. After you get your stuff modeled, you'll want to come in and you'll want to create sketch blocks. So on the ribbon here, I've gone to the little flyout and I've chosen, I'm gonna choose Create Block. And it gives me the ability to choose my geometry choose an insertion point and then give it a name. So I'll start with the base here. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. My insertion point, I'll go ahead and make that point right there. And I'm going to call this my crank base. And then choose apply. Now you'll see that it has now changed this into a block. All of the dimensions and everything were consumed by the block and they're gone. Um, they're not completely gone. If I choose cancel here and I go over to my history, you'll notice that there's a new node over here in my history. If I expand that node, there's now that block there called crank base. Okay, I'm going to repeat that process for the other three parts. So I'll say create block. I'll select over here. I'll select that one right there. I'll call it the crank itself. <clears throat> my insertion point will be that point right there and say OK or apply. Um, I will repeat it again for the crank arm. My insertion point I'll set as the middle. Crank arm. Apply. And then finally one last thing I'm going to do is the slide here. So my insertion point will be that point and then this is the slide and then apply. So now I've got all my parts, <clears throat> I've got them made into blocks, and at this point now I can come in and I can add constraints just like you would kind of in the uh, regular in, uh, assembly environment. So if I come in here for example, I know that I want this crank to sit inside of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a concentric reference between this circle here and this circle here and it moves it over there. By the way, I did make that other circle a little bit smaller so that you know when I model it, it's a it's going to fit inside of there. And if I rotate it, if I pick it, you can see that I can rotate it so that it will move. Okay, notice that I've moved that point there to from the 90 degree position to the side. So, it still has that rotational ability there. Okay? Continuing on, I can do the same thing with this slide. I want this slide to come down and slide along that. When I modeled these, I put a construction line there, and I put a construction line there so that it makes it nice and easy. I can do this with a 
uh, a collinear constraint. I can say I want a collinear constraint between that line there and that line there. Okay, and then that's good on that one. So now it will slide back and forth. And then I can do the same thing with this one here. Remember, I put those points in at the end. So I can say, okay, I want a coincident constraint between that point there and that point there. And then I want that same coincident constraint between the endpoint there and that center there. So now that those are all in place, I can test it to make sure that it's going to do what I want it to do. So if I turn this, for example, and I can have to grab it in the right spot. See, I can turn it back and forth. Now, in, in my desires here, maybe I, my desire is that I wish that this slide was coming a little bit closer to the end. And as I pull it down here, it's really not very close to the end here. So I can come back in and I can change this sketch now to, again, prove my design and improve my design. To change this sketch, you can either come up to the node up here and you can right click on it and you can choose edit. <clears throat> And then I can change the number here. So instead of six, maybe I want it to be five and a half. Finish. Okay. It automatically updates it. And now I can see that it's a little bit closer. Okay. Or you can just edit it in place. If I double click here, I can check it here. And I can say maybe it needs to be five and a quarter. Okay. Finish that. I kind of like just editing it in place. Makes it super easy. So now I'm coming within, you know, maybe like an eighth of an inch at the end there. And it's still going to poke out at the other end, which is fine. That's kind of what I wanted it to do. So now that's going to prove my design and, and get that ready to go. So now that I've proven my design here in the sketch environment and I'm ready to actually model my parts, all I have to do is insert this sketch into a modeling environment. So I'm going to go ahead and choose finish here and I'm going to save my drawing and then to create my uh, sketch or to my, my assembly, all I have to do is go to the Manage tab up here and choose Make Components. It's going to allow me to choose the things that I want to make components out of. So I can just pick them one, two, three, four here, right in this environment. And you'll see that it adds them all here the crank base, the slide, the crank arm, and the crank itself. It gives me the ability to give it a name. So I'll call it crank arm assembly. It's automatically going to save it <clears throat> in the right place. Okay. And as far as the template goes, um, it's going to allow me to do that standard assembly file there. Okay. Which is fine. So now I can choose next. On this page here, it brings me to the bill of materials, basically. It allows me, I could come in and I could change the names of the components here if I wanted to. I could change the bill of material structure if I wanted to. Um, it allows me the ability to create equivalent assembly constraints. I want that. Now, it may jam me up a little bit because I didn't necessarily add the points to the arm that I needed, but that's okay. We can always add those in later. So I will choose OK, and you'll see now that it's created a new file down here called crankarmassembly.iam, and everything is in this environment. Okay, and so I've got my base, I've got my slide, I've got my arm, and I've got that middle crank there. So now all I have to do if I want to work on these is if I wanted to say starting off with that crank base, okay, if I wanted to, I can just right click on here and I can choose edit. So now I'm just editing that right there and I say, oh, let's, let's extrude that. And I'm going to extrude the whole thing, all of my profiles there. I'm going to go the other direction. And in this case, I'm going to go a half inch. <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to go one inch on this. Um, like that. And <clears throat> I'm going to say, OK, well, that's all fine and dandy, except that I still need my slide and I need my recess for my crank to go in. So that's not really going to work, but this is just inventor. So at this point now I can expand this, uh, this first extrusion 
and I can make that sketch visible again. Right click on sketch, choose visibility. And so now I can come back in and I can do additional extrusions. So now I want to extrude that hole as a cut feature. And let's go 3 8 of an inch in depth. And I'll say OK on that one. And then for my slide right here, I'm going to do that one as an extrusion as well. <clears throat> I'm going to do it as a cut feature. On this one, I'm going to have it actually as a dovetail. So I'll change my angle here to 30 degrees. And you'll see that it's going to put that dovetail on there. And I'll say OK. And so now I've got that part completely modeled. OK. And just to help add a little bit of visibility, make it easier to see, I'll go ahead and I'll change the color here on that to, let's say, orange, just to make it a little bit easier to see. When I'm done with that, um, I want to come in here and then turn the visibility of that sketch back off. And I'll say return to the original part environment, okay, or the modeling, pardon me, assembly environment. Then all I have to do is repeat that same process with my other pieces. So let's see, for my slide itself, I'll right click on here and I'll say edit this. And I want to extrude that. I want to go the other direction. Again, it's going to be 3 eighths of an inch on this. It's going to have that same 30 degree taper. Okay, so it's going to fit in there just so. And I'll say OK. And then again, just to keep things consistent here, I'm going to come in and change the color on this to uh, how about something like a red. I don't know, it doesn't really matter here. So we'll say smooth, red, and then say OK, that's good. Again, I don't need to turn the visibility of the sketch off because it was already turned off when it was assumed or uh, consumed by the sketch. So I'll say return. For, I'll do the same thing now for the crank itself. <clears throat> so I'll say the crank itself, right click on here, edit that. We'll do an extrude on that one. Again, we're going to go the other direction, 3 8 of an inch. And no taper on this. So we're OK there. Uh, let's give this a different color. Got to pick in the right place here. Um, let's make this canary. A good yellow color. OK. And then finally, my crank arm itself, the only thing I have left to do, right click, edit. I'm going to extrude that. And let's go a quarter of an inch. Um, and then OK. And we can give this a different color as well. So let's come in here and we'll say something like maybe smooth purple and then return. So now we're back in this regular environment. And again, I can, oop. So now one of the things that I did is remember, I didn't necessarily have the right constraints in here. So I can just now easily come back in and put them all in. Looks like the only one that I'm missing is the constraint between um, my original crank and this part here. So I can just come in and say I want a joint. Let's say that I want it to be rotational. And this is my rotation here and that surface there. And that's going to work out fine. We'll say, OK, that's cool. And so now I can be satisfied that this all works. Now the last thing that I had on my video, or on my other one, was I had the screws in there. And I've got another video that shows this. But just in case you've never put the screws in, if I go to the Design tab, I can go to a bolted connection. <clears throat> it's asking me to save this, so I'm going to go ahead and save it. So now I can say I want this blind option here. It's going to be concentric. Okay, so my Start surface is this surface. It's going to have that concentric reference right there. Um, and then it's going to say, where is my blind surface starting? I'm going to say my blind surface starts right there. And now I can come in and I can click and add a fastener. So the fastener that I'll use will be like a flathead screw, um, just to kind of match what we had on the other one. I can change the size if necessary. That one's fine for what I'm doing there. So I can say apply. You can see that it puts the screw in place, and I'll do the same thing here. There's my surface, there's my concentric reference, the start plane is there. I'll add that same fastener in here. And then OK. 
and so now it puts those in it adds everything to the to the bill of materials or to the history over here and it's all ready to go and that is how you can use a layout sketch with sketch blocks to prove your design